not only a river, the river. The murderous Mara looking actually quite still and tranquil for once. And we have a grey heron basking in the sun and a hippopotamus playing hide and go, hide and seek behind that fallen uh, oh, what tree is that? I think it looks like a fallen hmm it is indeed a fallen ebony of a little diospirus but this part of the, the Mara River far more sort of sedate than the crossing points and one of the reasons the wildebeest don't like crossing here is due to the forest on the other side so all sorts of terrible things could wait for them in the forest on the other side so the wildebeest tend to try across where it's more open on both sides now speaking of the wildebeest betty is wondering when does the migration end well that changes every single year betty depending on local rainfall but it normally moves out of the mara sometime in september and starts heading south for, into tanzania and uh, they'll then stop again for a while around the southern plains of the Serengeti uh, for the birthing season and that's where most of those wildebeest calves are bir birthed then they head through into the western corridor uh, around the Grimeti river here's some Egyptian geese grazing on uh, the grass on the riverbank and then they'll start heading back north up towards the Mara again now strange enough seeing that Egyptian goose uh, when I was looking for the Egyptian goose pride of lions um, they had caused some murderous mayhem around a waterhole and there were a lot of carcasses and we actually saw three or four Egyptian goose feeding on the undigested grasses that uh, the wildebeest from the wildebeest stomach so that shows you that absolutely nothing goes to waste even though the lions might kill more than they can eat and leave it even the undigested grass is going to get eaten by something uh, well, Egyptian geese are great grazers, but of course uh, we also saw all sorts of insects, harvested termites, uh, that will also take advantage of that undigested grass that comes out of the stomach of a slain wildebeest or zebra. Now, I was hoping we might see, I can hear, where are you? I was hoping we might get a, a few little wading bird species about here, but alas, just uh, the waddling Egyptian goose and uh, the basking grey heron now if we look on there's the grey heron but if we look on the mud bank then there we go that is a grey heron uh, and lynn was wondering but if we look here you can see the river's dropped a little bit over the last few days we had quite a bit of rain and if we look onto this mud flat next to us here i've got a question for all of you ha 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 so let's zoom in on the mud flat uh, uh, the mud flat closest to us. There we go. That's it. Zoom in. Now, there's lots of little tracks. Now, the majority of those tracks are made by one animal. And I wonder if anyone can tell me what animal it is. If you know which animal has made those footprints, use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter to let us know. Let me go. Let me sh now, oh, there's a tree that is very beautiful here in the Mara. I'm just going to try and move back a tiny bit. And uh, it is slight in East Africa, and that's obviously due to the minerals and whatnot. In southern Africa, that's generally got a far, far paler bark, uh, much sort of more yellowy green. And uh, I've noticed here they're often much darker green. There we go. And there's a fever tree. Well, Roshni, close, but no cigar. Those footprints are not made by a stalk. And so there we go. And we've got... Oh, it looks like... Be heart, you are spot on. It is indeed Egyptian goose. But now, one of the interesting things that you noticed with this fever tree, um, which is very different from southern Africa, is that there's not a lot of salinity uh, in the areas that grow in this part of East Africa. But in southern Africa, there often is. So they will sacrifice a branch, uh, pump all the salts and, 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 and not nice minerals 
into that branch and, uh, and then it will sacrifice that branch and it will fall off. Oof, there's a bird, you see it, Manu? There you go, a little dark capped bulbul. If you come out in the fever tree. No, I just come, come out wide. It's on the far left hand side on one of the dangling branches. So there we go, zoom, zoom, you are there. Uh, a little bit up. There we go, see, there we go. Is he gone? No. No, he's still there. Okay, so zoom in slightly to the right. And you see the movement. There he is. A little, look like a dark cap bulbul. And he's very well camouflaged. Ah, and you notice in that foreground, there's a little creeper. It's very different leaves from the rest of the tree. Now that is a recessus vine, one of the Bushman's grapes. And I can just tell that by the shape of the leaves. Now some of the recessus vines can be very important if you're ever stuck out in the African bush because uh, the bigger species of recessus are the water vines that you can chop open with your machete and drink crystal cool water straight out of. Fortunately, I've got my water bottle, so I won't be needing to suck on the tiny recessus vine straw. And the dark cap bauble, he's waiting for some insects to appear. But while we wait patiently to see what else comes along here in the magnificent Mara, let's go to Tristan with the most numerous antelope in Africa, south of the Sahara.